I just wanted to make a short video. Hopefully this is a short one. And this is going to cover Pluto. We're going to talk a little bit more about Pluto. I know. Like, do we ever talk about anything else? <laughs> I feel like that's all everyone's been focused on for like the last year and a half. And now that Pluto is sitting in Aquarius, I kind of want to reflect. I want to take a moment to just sit back and reflect. And I've had people give me some feedback and I've been observing my mom's life, which is kind of why I always bring her up. Well, not that she's not part of my life. She's a huge part of it. And she's gone through some major changes when Pluto first went into Aquarius. So it was like a great astrology example. Plus, you know, there's times I'm recording a video and I need to stop to it because I need to have to get in touch with her or, or something's going on, you know. And so I have to, anyway, she, it's just part of my life. And that is changes. That's Pluto. It's changes, but it's changes in a big way. It's stuff that's, that's deep, that's powerful. Uh, it's undeniable. There's a, a, it's like an undercurrent and it's like the wave of change is upon you and you can fight it or you can just say, you know what? I see the way this is going and I just have to ride through this wave. I just got to let this ride out. Now, with that said, I will say that <clears throat> with the Pluto energy, the sign that it's in and how it's angling and what it's angling in your, in your chart matters. Like we have to pay attention to all those things to better understand what's changing, what's transforming, and how we kind of get to the truth of the matter. Because the word truth and real and authentic, those words have been coming up quite a bit. Uh, like in the last 10 days, there's been a lot of talk, whether it's amongst uh, your friends, uh, family members, friends of friends, people you you know, you, they're more like acquaintances online or people who you call friends that are online, you know, like whatever it is, there's been a, it's like, there's been some reflection going on. Right. And so this is now Aquarius still at zero degree. I'm sorry, Pluto in Aquarius still at zero degrees, but uh, at this recording, it's like at zero degrees in 30 minutes. So I had to wait for it to pass the zero 27 mark for me personally, because that's how it affects me personally in my chart. For my mom, it was zero degrees in 20 seconds or 20 minutes. For me, it was zero degrees, 27 minutes um, or 29 minutes, my bad. For one of my housemates, zero degrees, 27 minutes. That's why I'm getting the numbers mixed up. Because I know a lot of folks where we have either a house cusp line or our own natal Pluto, right? My mom, my her natal Pluto at zero degrees and 20 minutes in Leo. And so I've been wanting to do a response, a, a, a look at some sort of a comment <clears throat> about what's it going to mean when we have Pluto. That's for my mom. Hold on. Okay. It was my alarm and I just talked to her. I made sure I did that before I began and she was doing well. So yeah, so that's been part of my routine, my daily routine, a routine I didn't have uh, a year ago. I didn't have this routine, but since Pluto dipped into her sign and then dipped back out, my, my responsibilities and duties have changed, right? And why is that for me? Like, as an example, I'm not going to pull my chart up, I'm not going to do all that, but just as a quick example, because obviously the opposite of Aquarius is Leo. So regardless of whose chart I'm talking about, we can all relate to this, right? Pluto and Aquarius is opposing all the Leo energy. My mom's got her Pluto and Leo, right? But how does that affect me in my life? And why do I all of a sudden feel like this duty and responsibility towards my mom? Well, my midheaven is around like right there. My midheaven is at zero degrees and 20, what did I say? 27 minutes, 29 minutes or something like that. So that's where my midheaven is. <clears throat> and that means that it's opposite of my IC, which is your home. You follow? Your home, your family, your mom. You get it? Right. So Pluto's over here, and this is my home over here. But opposite of your home, the midheaven, is your duty and your responsibilities. And so Pluto is there. And Pluto's like, there's responsibilities here because that's the midheaven by nature, the midheaven, Saturn, your goals, your duties, your responsibility. But now Pluto's there. And it's like, there's something that has to do with the past. This is like a soul's stirring, I call it, your soul's stirring, a calling of the soul. Uh, there's, there's history here. 
And so whether it's a, a soul pact, a soul promise, some sort of a soul contract, there's a lot of different names that people give to it. But Pluto is, is part of all of that. So that is a tiny, tiny example, right? Tiny, tiny example. Because Pluto being powerful in the recall, in the history, in the ancestry, and what went on in the past. And I don't mean just the past according to this lifetime. And so for you, we're not, and, and me both, we're not just dealing with, with what did I do in my past in this lifetime, but it's more of the memory of the soul, the history of the soul, meaning all your collective experiences, the collective experiences of the soul. And some say that there is a thing called a universal soul or the soul of the universe. Okay. And so within that soul of the universe or the universe of the soul, whatever you want to call it, there's then the individual souls within that because the universal soul would be like the big picture. So we're all connected. There's that line, there's that link. So we're all connected in that way by that invisible thread, that invisible thread. And the question becomes, why do we feel compelled or drawn or driven? How is it that we're, where's this power coming from? Where's this drive coming from? Where is this passion? Where's this understanding coming from? Pluto is intense in its power, intense power, intense emotions, intense feelings. So we can, for some, there's been great releases. In particular, I've been looking at a lot of charts with people who have their Pluto and Scorpio because obviously Pluto and Aquarius is squaring Pluto and Scorpio. Now it's also squaring Pluto and Taurus. Yeah. Taurus and Scorpio create that T square to Aquarius energy. And then that's the great cross that we get with, with the fixed signs, Aquarius, Leo, Pluto, and Scorpio. Did I say Pluto and Scorpio? Pluto and Taurus. <laughs> Forgive me. <laughs> so it's that fixed cross that Pluto can be creating for some of you in your lives, but more specifically, Leo. So we think of Leo energy and we think of if Pluto is opposing Leo, it's almost obvious because we're seeing it on the big screen, literally, if we follow politics, people who have strong Leo energy. Now, I just want to make clear, this is not about politics, but we do have a political figure in the United States who is, who's a public figure, who is no longer um, in office, right? The previous president had Regulus on his ascendant, like the degrees of his ascendant match the degrees of Regulus at 29 degrees in Leo, the royal star of Persia. King energy, king energy, right? And so that Regulus, when you read it, it specifically says that you will be stowed great power. This is the power of royalty and kings and, and just like that lineage from the family. It's the inherited stuff, right? And if this power isn't wheeled in a fair fashion, if we are looking out for only self, if we are not using the power for the best for all involved, because remember, it's got to pop over to the Aquarius side to be used properly. It's got to be someone who's a humanitarian and they can't just talk it. They got to be it, right? Then it's a promise. The regular promise is there will be a fall from grace. There will be a fall from power. Now, this is not a uh, a kick down video. This isn't a, someone's down on the ground and, and we're, and we're, and we're, you know, throwing dirt on them. This isn't about that. This is explaining that there is an example of somebody in the public eye where if we are following along and paying attention, we can see the challenges that Pluto opposing Leo energy can present. And so another quick example, my mom has, um, other than her Pluto, right? Her Pluto, her, let, let's be clear. If I didn't 
clarify that her Pluto, her natal Pluto, she's born in 1939, zero degrees and 20 minutes in Leo, which is why when all this came about, I thought, oh my gosh. So my mom literally had Pluto opposing Pluto. Now, someone had recently asked me, did you observe? Like, what was that like? Because remember now, it's Pluto and we have to pay attention to the minutes with Pluto because it's such a slow mover, right? That it's the minutes where we then see it come to life. We see it literally in the material and the tangible. The undercurrent stuff where we're not physically recognizing it, um, yeah, it's it's kind of hidden because that's what Pluto does. It operates below the surface. Think of pipes that are under the ground. Think of the sewer, the sewers below the city, right? Think of all that. That's all Pluto stuff. That's all Plutonian energy, right? It's water, but it's hidden. It's intense. It's deep. It can sometimes be dirty and nasty and it's stuff we don't want to see. But without it, there's disease and we would die, right? Like, like cultures and civilizations have lived through that. And we've learned, okay, that stuff is vital. It's needed, but we need to keep it away and we need to keep it below the surface. Right. And so when there's a problem down there, it usually there's like an eruption. Right. So sometimes we even liken it to the gas pipes in your home. Sometimes when there's like explosions, because gas is quiet, but yet it's powerful and, and it's, it's going through pipes because it's hidden. It's unseen. It's below the surface normally. All right. So Pluto energy to see it is normally going to be matched with the minutes. So on that day when my mom had, when the Pluto up in the sky was at zero degrees in 20 minutes, as soon as I called my mom that morning, I could hear Pluto right off the bat. She answered her phone and she just barked at me. Her hello, like I just called her. I just called her right before I began. I mentioned it. And the first thing I said, hello, hello, how are you doing? And she said, oh, hello, how are you? I'm doing well. Normal, normal, right? Actually, that's not normal. <laughs> not for my mom. <laughs> not what I'm used to anyway. Especially not what I grew up with. You were lucky to get words. You know, she was very quiet. You were lucky to get words. Um, unless you were having some intellectual conversation or some, anyway, she very strong Aquarian energy. So now... On this particular day, I say, hello, hello, happy Monday or happy Tuesday. It was a Monday. I say, happy Monday. And she responds, hello, what, what can I do for you? Like it was, she just barked at me, you know, I'm like, so I just knew because I had, like I said, the astrology, I'm like, okay, I'm kind of prepared for her. And, and, and plus she's got the Alzheimer's and depending upon how that's going too, there's like a whole complicated set of things that could, that could pop off at any minute or not feel or look or sound right at any second. And I said, I waited, actually, I let some, I let some dead air between us sit for a couple of seconds before I responded. And, uh, I said, I was just calling to see how you were doing. And I made sure I got my voice really low <laughs> and really calm and really quiet. And it was almost as though she was waiting to hear a challenging voice on the other side. Like I wasn't thinking that it's what I felt. And I know the whole feeling and, and all that and like, hey, where's the thinking involved? Because if someone thought about it in advance, which I didn't think about it in advance, not technically, I just knew, okay, God only knows what this is going to be like today, right? And so <clears throat> whatever, the Pluto in me was just like, hold your ground. Stay strong and calm. Hold your ground. And so I just did. And, I, and I, that's easy to do on the phone, right? A lot easier to do it face-to-face. -face. So I give credit to my siblings who are there who are doing the face-to-face -face on a regular. Absolutely. Because it's very difficult. I had my share of it here when she was literally here where I am. Um, in the same state in Illinois. And so I understand that, 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 how that goes. Um, and so I just stayed quiet. I just said those few things calmly and her response was quite different. She, she said she, it was almost like she was aware of the contrast of the difference 
in the communication styles. Maybe I'm wrong. I didn't ask. I didn't say we need to discuss. Okay, why did you answer the phone that way? I didn't go there. I didn't. You don't do that. With her at this stage, less is best, right? That's just the way it is. So simple is best. And so I, I just waited and, and she calmly said, oh, well, I'm doing fine. And I said, okay, I just want you to know what time it is because confusion is a big thing with Alzheimer's. I want you to just, just call and check what time it is. And is it a good time to check your morning meds? You never approach with, I'm calling because it's time to check the morning meds, which is you're telling me that it's time to check the morning meds. No, 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 no. You don't do that with Pluto and Leo. You do not tell them. You see the difference? Because they feel they're in charge. This is their life, goddammit. I am the king of my life. You, Pluto and Aquarius, are not going to tell me what to do. You see? So it's an honor of both. We both are valid. So we both have to meet each other in our art of negotiations, which is I honor you're in an individual. I respect your rights. I respect your your, your right to have a life of your own and have a timing of cycles of your own. So I'm always trying to be mindful and to remind myself of if this is a good time for you, that would be great. If it's not a good time for you, would you like me to call you back? And sometimes I will literally call back five minutes and, and she'll, for, for her, that could have been 45 minutes or two hours that have passed. So it works out because of the memory stuff. Hold on, let me turn this stuff down real quicker. And so the challenge, the whole part of that example was to explain that if each side honors each other, because there's a lot of power each way, right? This one wants to be, is just waiting for a rumble. <laughs> it's Leo energy. It's super courageous. It thinks it's the king. And the king is so brave because it feels like it's got an army that supports it, even if it doesn't. Like my mom's got no army that supports her. I mean, she does, right? But physically there at the moment, um, you know, she's like tons of seniors whose mates have died. You're in a home alone, right? I mean, she, of course, has some family and someone checks in every single day with her. Absolutely. Not to mention the cameras that are there. So she's got eyes on her all the time. But regardless, even if she didn't have the cameras, like that Pluto that Pluto in Leo with the Pluto in Aquarius opposition, it was like a tug of war, a challenge of the power, a challenge of you're going to challenge my power. Or I'm going to challenge you right back. And just the face that's put on the bold face, the strong face, the power struggle, the power struggle. So that is for Pluto in Leo. So it might not be as intense depending upon what you have in Leo, right? And so for anyone listening, if you have things, I mean, let's put it like this. We all have Leo energy in our chart. I have Leo, Leo, my fourth house. I only have one planet in Leo, but my house cusp line to my fourth house, which your house cusp line, all your house cusp lines are important. They're all important. Okay. They're all going to be sensitive. Whatever degree those are, whatever that house cusp line, whatever number it begins at is sensitive. So go in your chart and see for any of your house cusp lines, find where the Leo energy is. See if you have a house cusp line that, that's in Leo energy and see what degree it's in, okay? Because the degree is going to be a big deal because for right now, Pluto's only going to go, Pluto's only going to, I'm sorry, yeah, Pluto is in Leo. It's only going to go to Leo energy. Aquarius energy, forgive me for the confusion, okay? I've got Mercury just playing games with me right now, so just, just bear with me. But we only have Pluto going to an Aquarius energy. Pluto's, so it goes right over to, yeah, 206, 206. It gets to like two degrees in six minutes, and then it begins its retrograde. And so that's in May, okay? That's going to be in May. That's actually like right at the beginning of May, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So we got like May 1st, May 1st, right? Uh, May 1st, May 2nd, depending upon where you live in the, or I should say the end of um, the last day of April, the first day of May. Okay. Depending upon where you live in the world. And so that's two degrees in six minutes. So if you don't have for the year, uh, for the first part of 20, or I should say for the year of 2024, if you don't have anything, 
between zero degrees and two degrees and six minutes of Pluto or of Aquarius and Leo, Taurus and Scorpio, then I wouldn't be so concerned, at least not right now. And pay attention to those degrees of Leo in your chart of zero degrees and two degrees of Leo, two degrees and six minutes of Leo. Because Leo energy will get activated when Pluto is exactly opposing it. So for that battle with my mom, the zero degrees and 20 minutes with the Leo energy for her, after that day, it was no longer a thing. The next day I talked to her, it was like she had completely come down. She was way down. She wasn't on 10 anymore. She had completely chilled out. She had completely become a little bit more normalized and not so intense and fiery and ready to go to battle with me. And it wasn't like we were in a power struggle, Pluto opposing Pluto, you see? So for your life with your Leo energy, if you've got planets, put them in the comments below. And then I could give you the timeline as to when Pluto will be opposing. And, and then also, you don't have to be dependent on me. You know, like there are ways that you can see Pluto's cycle. You know, you're looking at an ephemeris. There are ways you can see the cycle and you can find out for yourself. But when you think of Pluto opposing Leo and what is that going to mean for you in your life? Uh, one of the things I noticed when Pluto went into Aquarius was uh, laughter. It triggered the laughter and the humor. Did you guys, did anybody notice that? Many times we don't notice unless we're journaling, right? Some people are just, you know, your level of self-awareness is really up. And so that's wonderful because then you don't, sometimes we have to journal to become self-aware or sometimes we're agile enough in the mind to be self-aware. And typically, even if you're agile in the mind, you know, I think of, of people who have jobs and who have children, who have pets, who have a, who have, are really busy and don't even have time to think because they're just constantly going from one thing to the next, right? So if you've got that busy lifestyle, sometimes taking five minutes out to, to jot things down will make it easier to, um, to just put some thoughts down, you know, five minutes of reflection type of thing. Uh, so humor, I noticed humor and a taste for something new and different a taste for something new and different. So that could be with food because it squares Taurus, tastes and senses. It could be with Scorpio, like I'm done fighting. I don't want to fight anymore. Or maybe you're antsy. Maybe you're feeling like you got to take on some new battle. But for most folks and the feedback I've been getting is, God, I just want some peace. I don't want to fight. I'm, I have a better understanding of what my values are, who I value, what I value. And so much the challenge of Pluto squaring the Taurus and the natural resources, but it's things that we've been used to. And so it's uncomfortable because it's like, Ooh, AI, I got a problem with that. There's like this new, um, you know, where no man has gone before type of energy. And so it can be frightening and scary. And we cling, we cling to what was from the old and what was from the past. So before I close off, I want to read some Aquarius keywords here. Okay. And so that, you know, these are not my Aquarian keywords. This is from a book by Jan Spiller and for her Aquarius keywords, inventive solutions, seeing the future, humanitarian attitudes, revelations, humor, friends, and avoiding excessive detachment, avoiding it. So Aquarius rules inventions, including innovative ideas, brilliance, eccentricity, which is unique and different, understanding how things work. When it comes to the future, Aquarius is the trendsetter. It's unconventional approaches, high tech, long range goals, because you know, Saturn is the co-ruler, right? Following your heart's desire. Aquarius is a humanitarian, so it seeks outcomes that are good for everyone involved. And there's an identification with humankind, interest in others, and operating from a larger world view. The revelations for Aquarius energy can be unexpected results, excitement, surprises. Revitalizing experiences involved with freedom. Revitalizing experiences, including freedom. Seeking knowledge, 
uh, using tools, even possibly learning to use different tools, astrology, humor, again, manifesting one's dreams. And when it comes to friendship, groups and networking, open and friendly approaches, forthrightness, giving and receiving, platonic love, friends. And now for Leo energy, because for some, this is a, you know, Leo energy and identifying the Leo energy by your traits in, in your life and how you live, right? How you act. And so, uh, yeah, if I look where Leo is in my chart and I say, oh yeah, it's Leo in the home. But then when I'm in my home or when I'm dealing with mom or if I'm dealing with family, how do I literally pinpoint those characteristics and traits in the moment? So creative, creative, generosity, love and romance, celebration, play and fun, dignity and determination, arrogance and learning to temper one's arrogance. There's more. So dating, intense love encounters, see the word intense slipped in there, giving and seeking approval. In your creativity, there's enthusiasm and in creative projects, artistic, unique expression, total subjective involvement, self actualization and passion, total subjective involvement. It's kind of like the ego. It's all me, total self subjective involvement, self actualization. And it doesn't have to be ego in a bad way, but it's more about this is an expression of who I am. This is me. Love, giving love, loyalty, generosity, bringing joy, Encouraging others and kindness. Kindness. Where has the kindness gone? Pleasure in celebrating, fun and games, play and parties, vacation, recreational sports, taking risks because they're exciting. Dignity. Leo rules dignity, which is recognition, you know, like the king. Being center stage in the spotlight, self-confidence, powerful individual expression, radiance and benevolence. Leadership, concentrated focus, follow through, strength of purpose, self-determination, stamina and a resoluteness. It also rules arrogance. We mentioned that before. And so about arrogance, there is pride. And being overly dramatic. Remember, these are the theatrics, the theater. These can be people with those loud voices who can sing too, though. Self-centeredness, extravagances, and being, being very bossy. Bossiness is a word. Overconfident and, oh, and bossiness. What about the health? The back and the spine, this is interesting. I've never heard this one before. The back and the spine, exhaustion and heat exhaustion. The heart, I've heard of that one, and inflammation. Okay, areas for the body and health. Back and spine, heart, heat, exhaustion, inflammation. Interesting. So those are some of the different words for Leo and for Aquarius and how we can recognize Leo energy in our life. And so at home with the family, who's the boss, mom being the boss, dad being the boss, who's got the courage, who's the center of stage, right? And I say at home because I'm relating it to me in my fourth house. Where's the Leo energy in your chart? Because Pluto is at the exact opposite of it. Put it in down below in the comments and I can give you some keywords back to better recognize it and how it would show up in that house for you right? And don't forget the degrees of the cusp line of where your Leo energy begins. And it might not have a house cusp line using tropical placidus charts, which means all the houses are of different sizes. It's a circle chart. All the houses are of different sizes. And so sometimes you can have, you know, your Leo energy, depending upon your birth time, can begin in any of those houses, but it might not have a beginning. Your Leo energy can begin halfway through a house. You see, so it might not be relevant for you. You might not even have a planet in Leo. However, 
what I would recommend is to get one of the charts that I use. And I only say that, I only say that because of this reason. Let me show you this chart really quick. You see, if I go look for the Leo energy, it's at the bottom there. Oh, look at this. And this chart, the house cusp, it's the fourth house. And the Leo energy, if you can see my cursor, the Leo energy is the fourth house cusp line. And it begins right there at 1246. You see it? But there is some energy in Leo. See, I've got these planets here that I'm lighting up in Leo. And they're parts of fortune. They're Arabic lots. There's that kind of stuff. So in my charts, because I really am a true blue or whatever color, I won't say true blue. Uh, you know, I actually, every color of the rainbow, how about that? Uh, unicorn color type thing of uh, of astrology. I truly um, want to be able to see as much as I can see in a chart and handle at one time because it makes more sense to me. I know that there's pieces missing. And so it drives my brain crazy when I'm like, I know there's things from this chart that are missing. And so my brain's constantly looking for the mystery. So this way, when I have more pieces of the puzzle present, I'm like, now I can see the bigger picture. My point is that the charts that I draw up show things that you're never going to see in the traditional charts, right? Because there's just too much. And for some, it's, it's, it's overwhelming. But when we're talking about Leo energy, don't you want to see everything that you might possibly have in Leo? You see what I mean? I mean, that makes sense, doesn't it? To be able to focus on everything that you have in Leo and to give you an even better example, but let's just go to Leo. This particular chart, yep, on this particular chart, I've got some things over here and you can see, yep, that's the object number one is at one degrees in 10 minutes. So if this was your chart, Pluto would be opposing this object, whatever this object means. Do you want to know what that object is, that symbol? You see that symbol right there? Yeah, it looks like kind of like a bowl with a circle in it, like the earth inside of this bowl. But then it looks like, it looks almost like an aerial view of a human being standing there, put, put their hands, like to give somebody a hug. You know, it depends on your perspective, of course. But I could tell you what it means, right? And then there's the part of fortune. There's the lot, Arabic lot, the part of abundance. And then there's Vulcan. And these are all at one degrees, one degrees, one degrees, and two degrees. And these are all transiting planets up in the sky. So technically, technically, you know, we all have this kind of going on by transit. But what do you have natally, you see? So understanding your Leo energy and seeing what house number those early degrees from zero to two degrees, what house number they're in is how you can better understand what's happening. And so to give a little bit of extra feedback now for folks who have like Aquarius, I'm sorry, Pluto energy, we've got some folks who have, you know, the generation who's got Pluto in Scorpio. Well, who may is there right now? Okay. So a lot of people have been saying things like, um, there's been an awareness of deep emotions and of wounds, maybe betrayals, right? And um, vulnerabilities and uh, just things that were surprising, right? Things that were surprising for many. But remember with Humea here and Humea in a retrograde, it's going, there's a healing that's in the process of, because the chances are, if you've got something at the zero, there's many folks who have like their son zero degrees or one degrees in, in Scorpio, their Pluto energy at zero and at one, um, you know, you, the generation who's got Pluto and, and Scorpio, you guys have been activated. So Humea is there to provide healing, to create something beautiful out of a wound, out of those scars. This is absolutely the Phoenix rising energy because Scorpio is Phoenix rising all by itself. But Humea is here to assist. We think of what happens when there's a fire, a big fire, and there's nothing left but ashes. And then literally weeks later, we see these little sprigs of green popping up. Whereas weeks before there was devastation and it was like all ash and it was destruction. Everything was just black ash. It looked deader than dead. And somehow out of that ash, we could see life. And that is this energy, that is this power, that is this transformation, that's the promise of Pluto. And that's the promise 
of Pluto and Aquarius squaring Pluto and Scorpio. Okay. So the Pluto in Leo and the, and the energy for folks who have stuff in their Leo, you got to comment to me and let me know what you got. And you got to kind of reflect to me. Let's do a verbal journal. You tell me, hey, what do I got between the zero and the one or the zero and the two degrees of Leo? And you just tell me what you recognize or what's going on in your life. And that way we can create this, this vlog for folks that's tied into astrology, learning astrology, and seeing the real life examples of what this felt like and how this expressed in their life and how they can recognize it. Make sense? So that's it. That's all we're doing for right now. I will check you, uh, check back with you in the next video. And if you're still with me, just remember, I always appreciate your time and take care. Bye-bye.